next chapter molecular basis of inheritance in the last class we discussed about uh, enzymes after completion of enzymes the next chapter is molecular basis of inheritance see in this chapter we will discuss about uh, how the dna replication is takes place how the rna synthesis takes place how the protein synthesis takes place simply the central dogma of the life we will discuss here in the chapter we will discuss about the total central dogma of the life First, suppose uh, in the first year we already studied uh, there is a cell division process is there during the cell division process there is an interface is there after that inter yeah, within interface G1 phase is there S phase is there G2 phase is there right within S phase DNA replication is takes place right and after that uh, DNA replication process there is an G2 phase is there some of the proteins are synthesized and between these two there is an RNA synthesis takes place See what I am telling here, any cell requires central dogma of the life. Central dogma of the life majorly maintain the life of any living organism. Any living organism. So how the life is maintained by the synthesis of enzymes? Enzymes are involved in several biochemical reactions. By the, chemical, by the biochemical reactions, there is an anabolism which takes place and catabolism which takes place. So here what I am telling in the molecular basis of inheritance, we will discuss about what is genetic material, how the genetic material synthesis takes place, and uh, how the RNA synthesis takes place, how the protein synthesis takes place. We will discuss. First, suppose, okay, very first question is what is genetic material? See, most of the living organisms, not most, all living organisms contains genetic material is the double stranded DNA. But some of the virus, viruses are not considered as living organisms. That's the reason why this is also not included in biological system, biological classification systems. So here viruses are exceptional case. Some of the viruses having genetic material is the RNA. Some of the virus having the genetic material is the RNA. So in this chapter we'll discuss about that uh, DNA, DNA to DNA, DNA to mRNA, that is nothing but RNA, RNA to protein. So there is a DNA replication process, there is a transcription process, there is a translational process. See, after synthesis of mRNA, post transcriptional modifications also we will discuss. But in viruses, there is a reverse transcription process. Some viruses contain genetic material is the RNA, RNA involving the synthesis of DNA. The process is called as reverse transcription. The process is called as reverse transcription, right? All, regarding to all these parameters, we will discuss. Remember, the very first one is here, nucleic acids. Nucleic acids first identified by Frederick Mischer, is a scientist. See, the discovery of nucleic acids. Discovery of nucleic acids done by Frederick Mischer. And uh, at the same time, the scientists identified there is an acidic compounds are present. Acidic compounds are present. That acidic compounds first identified by the Frederick Mischer Right? See, the initial name also nucleon. The initial name is nucleon. After that, the term nucleic acids. Term nucleic acid first coined by the Altman. Altman is a scientist. He first coined, he first coined nucleic acids. He coined the term nucleic acids. And what is nucleic acid? Remember, nucleic acids are polymers of nucleotides. Nucleic acids are polymers of nucleotides. What is nucleotide? We well known nucleotide means there is a nitrogen base ribosugar phosphate. Nitrogen base ribosugar phosphate. If these three components are present, the components are called as nucleotides. Remember DNA or RNA. Okay, DNA or RNA made up of with nucleotides. See, there is a repeated units of nucleotides are there. These nucleotides are linked by the phosphodiester bonds. So this process is called as polymerization process. That's the reason why DNA is the polymer, RNA is the polymer, DNA is the polymer, right? RNA is the polymer. But there is a composition differentiation is there. Nucleic acids are polymers of nucleotides. Within nucleic acids, there is a nitrogen basis are there, ribosugar, ribosugar or deoxyribosugar. Remember, within RNA, ribosugar is present. Within DNA, deoxyribosugar is present. Within DNA, deoxyribosugar is present, right? And phosphate is there. So, three components are present, nitrogen bases, ribosugar or deoxyribosugar phosphate. These three components are, okay, if these three components are present, that one is called as 
nucleotide. Only two is there. Nitrogen based ribosome is there. That one is called as nucleoside. So that is the difference between nucleotide and nucleoside. And coming to the next one, within nitrogen bases, there is a purine are there, pyrimidines are there. Generally, we know adenine, adenine is there, guanine is there, adenine and the guanine. These two are called as purines. These two are called as purines. And coming to the pyrimidines, there is an guanine, sorry, there is an thymine, cytosine, uracil. There is an thymine, cytosine, cytosine, uracil. These three components are called as pyrimidines. These three components are called as pyrimidines. So, purines, adenine, guanine, right? And pyrimidines, thymine, cytosine, uracil, right? So, here, purines are there. Purines are there. Within the purines, there is an adenine, guanine is there. This is the structure of adenine and this is the structure of guanine. See, 6 amino purine. 6 amino purine is called as adenine. And guanine is 2 amino 6 oxy purine. 2 amino 6 oxy purine. Remember all of you, we already know always here purines or pyrimidines are heterocyclic rings. Purines or pyrimidines are heterocyclic rings. Heterocyclic rings means which are made up of with more than one type of molecules. Which are made up the rings which are made up of with more than one type of atoms or molecules. Remember here this is one of the NNN. There is a two ring structures are there. In the case of the purines, two ring structures are there. Here at sixth position, according to that IUPAC name, this is the first position, second position, third one, fourth one, fifth one, sixth one, right? At sixth position, amino group is present, right? Again, this is the seventh one, eighth one, ninth one. So, the structure is the six amino purine. Six amino purine is nothing but adenine. Six amino purine is nothing but the adenine. And coming to the next one, guanine. Here, two amino at second position, amino group is present. At the sixth position, oxygen atom is present. So, this one is called as guanine. Remember, this is the difference between adenine and guanine. These two are belongs to the purines. These two are belongs to the purines. And within this case, see, this is the one of the big term. Either in the case of the purines, either in the case of the pyrimidines, at which position nitrogen atoms are present. Within purines, 1, 3, 7, 9. There is in first position, third position, seventh position, ninth position. Either in the case of the adenine, either in the case of the guanine, at 1, 3, 7, 9 position, nitrogen atoms are present. Okay, so that is about the purines. That is about the purines. At the fourth position, this is the fourth position. Sorry, this is not six, this is the fourth position. So, this is the fourth position. So, two oxy, this is the two oxy and four amino pyramid structure. Two oxy, four amino pyramid structure. This is called as cytosine. This is called as cytosine. Right? And next one is that uracil. Second position is there. Fourth position is there. 2,4-dioxy. This is 2,4-dioxy pyramid. 2,4-dioxy pyramid is called as uracil. 2,4-dioxy pyramid is called as uracil. The last one here. 2,4-dioxy. 2,4-dioxy. At fifth position, methyl group is added. 2,4-dioxy. 5-methyl. Okay. Pyramidine is called as thymine. 5. Yeah. 2,4-dioxy, 5-methyl, okay, the pyramidine is called as thymine. So, these are the nitrogen bases which are seen in nucleic acids. Remember all of you, always in DNA, there is an adenine is present, guanine is present, thymine is present, cytosine is present within DNA. But, in RNA, there is an adenine is there, okay, guanine is there, right, cytosine is there, thymine is replaced by uracil, thymine is replaced by so here, within pyramidines, three types are there, cytosine, uracil, thymine. Cytosine, uracil, thymine. Thymine is seen in DNA, uracil is seen in RNA, right? That is about the nitrogen bases. That is about the nitrogen bases. After discussion about the nitrogen bases, coming to the next one is the ribosugar and deoxyribosugar. See, this is the ribosugar structure. So, this is the first position and second position, third one, fourth one, and this is the fifth position. So, this is the ribosugar and this is the deoxyribosugar. See, this is the first position, second, third, fourth, and fifth position. Remember, what is the basic depression? What is the, sorry, what is the basic difference between ribosugar and the deoxyribosugar? Here, 
second position is there at the second position within deoxy means oxygen atom is absent so at the second position oxygen atom is absent that's the reason why this is called as deoxy ribose sugar at second position here oxygen atom is present that's the reason why this is called as ribose sugar so between the ribose and deoxy ribose sugar only one difference is there oxygen atom absent at second position here oxygen atom present at second position we already discussed the stability of the genetic material which are uh, definitely related to that second position oxygen atom because here this is the first position the first position interact with the nitrogen base so here nitrogen base binded at the first position and at third position this one involved in the phosphodiester bond formation and the fifth position also involved in the phosphodiester bond formation so what i am telling here okay why the dna is stable why the dna is stable why the rna is not stable why the rna is the not stable because at first position nitrogen base is present between the nitrogen base and the ribose sugar there is an n glycosidic bond is present n glycosidic bond is present and this is the third position this one involving the phospho ester bond formation finally okay this one is involved in the phospho ester bond formation right again this one interact with the another nucleotide that is phospho diester bond formation so one is involved in the phospho diester bond formation other one is involved in the phospho ester bond formation so here first position okay nitrogen base are binding third position phospho diester bond formation fifth position oxygen atom involved in the phospho ester bond formation so here these three are okay these three are completely blocked by the bonds formation second position oxygen atom is free here second position oxygen atom is free so this one interact with the other molecule that's the reason why rna is unstable but dna this one involved in the okay interact with the nitrogen base and this one involved in the phospho diester bond formation this one involved in the phospho ester bond formation right so these are these are completely blocked by the different bond formation here oxygen atom is absent this is unable to interact with the other components that's the reason why here dna is more stable than rna dna is more stable than rna so that is the difference between here ribose sugar and the deoxy ribose sugar we know about that phosphate see these are the phosphate molecules see the phosphates which are interact with that ribose sugar or deoxy ribose sugar which are continuously forms the linkages or which are continuously involved in the phosphodiester bond formation finally a group of nucleotides are combined by phosphodiester bonds finally forms the large molecules that is nothing but dna that is nothing but the dna so ribose sugar deoxy ribose sugar phosphate see we already discussed about within the first year there is an nucleotide is there that is nothing but here nucleotide and nucleoside these are the basic terms what is the difference between nucleoside and nucleotide what is the difference between nucleoside and the nucleotide see adenine is the nitrogen base that is interact with the ribose sugar right this is called as adenosine this is called as adenosine if adenosine interact with the phosphate that is called as nucleotide see adenine plus ribose sugar that is nucleoside adenosine that is nothing but adenine plus ribose sugar adenosine plus phosphate that is called as nucleotide so three components that is nucleotide tri type right and two side two right so adenine ribose this is called as adenosine phosphate interacted this is called as nucleotide this is called as adenylic acid monophosphate is present within that within all these structures monophosphate is present single phosphate molecules are there this is called as adenylic acid and second one guanine plus ribose this is called as guanosine okay here phosphate is there if the phosphate is added guanine guanosine plus phosphate that is called as guanylic acid that is called as guanylic acid and come to the next cytosine is there cytosine interact with the ribose sugar this is called as cytidine this is called as cytidine see cytidine interact with phosphate molecule this is called as cytidylic acid cytidylic acid and next one thymine plus ribose sugar this is called as thymidine thymidine interact with the phosphate thymidine interact with the phosphate this is called as 
Timidilic acid. Timidilic acid. Last one, Viracy. This is in our name. Right? And ribose sugar. This is called as uridine. Uridine interact with that phosphate. This is called as uridilic acid. This is called as uridilic acid. So, these are the components of the DNA, especially ribose sugar present in RNA, deoxyribose sugar present in DNA, phosphate is present in both DNA and RNA. So, these are the technical components, nucleoside, yeah, technical components, nucleoside and nucleotide. So, that is the difference between nucleoside and nucleotide. Coming to the genetic material, we have already discussed there is in uh, two types of genetic materials are there. Whatever that living organisms are there, all living organisms contains genetic materials, the DNA. And viruses which are not considered as the living organisms. That's the reason why uh, the virus is also not included in the biological classifications. Whatever the classifications we have. Okay. Now all these classifications, the viruses are not included. So here what I am telling, basically here genetic material is the two types of the genetic material is there. One is the DNA, other one is the RNA. See, in the evolution also, we discussed in the first year classes, in the evolution process also, the first genetic material is the RNA. Okay, whatever that uh, first evolved cells are there, within that first evolved cells, the first genetic material is the RNA. RNA is replaced by the DNA containing cells or DNA containing cells. So here, the genetic material here, two types are there, DNA and RNA. Again here, DNA, two types are there, single standard DNA and double standard DNA. Remember, all living organisms contains that genetic material is the double standard DNA. Here, the typical one is the viruses. Some viruses are having double standard DNA and some viruses are having single standard DNA. Single standard DNA that is seen in viruses. So, single standard DNA, the first one is Okay, pi into 174, the virus name is pi into 174 bacteriophage. That bacteriophage, we know that bacteriophage, the bacteriophage indicates the viruses which attacks the bacteria. Viruses which attacks the bacteria, these are called as bacteriophages. Within that pi into 174 type of the bacteriophage, it contains that DNA is the single standard DNA. It's having base pairs are the 5, yeah, 5386. 5,386 base pairs are present and the DNA is the linear DNA. The DNA is the linear DNA. Here two types of the DNA are there. One is that linear DNA, other one is the circular DNA. So within 5,174 bacteriophage, 5,386 base pairs are there. The DNA is the linear DNA. And the other one is that M13 phase is there. Okay, M13 phase is there. This one is also single standard DNA and the DNA is the circular DNA. The DNA is the circular DNA. So here double standard DNA, coming to the next one is the double standard DNA, lambda phase DNA or lambda bacteriophase or lambda phase DNA. Here 48,502 base pairs within that lambda phase DNA, 48,502 base pairs. Here DNA is the linear DNA, here DNA is the linear DNA. Remember always these numbers are very important, what are the numbers I mentioned here? These numbers are very important, most of the time. Here, neat examination, these numbers are also given, right? Coming to the next one is the E. coli. E. coli is the bacteria. E. coli is the bacteria. That bacteria is contains that uh, circular DNA and 4.6 into 10 to the power of 6 base pairs are present. We well known the best example is the Aethericia coli, that is the bacteria. We well known bacteria, that bacteria contains the base pairs are 4.6 into 10 to the power of 6 base pairs. Here, there is a circular DNA is present, right? Coming to the next one, human genome, all human beings contains that genetic material is the double standard DNA, all we are well known and within that, okay, in within haploid set, here genome indicates haploid set, genome indicates here haploid set of chromosomes, right, here haploid set, the base pairs are 3.3 into 10 to the power of 9 base pairs, within haploid set maybe, if we are taking the sperm cells, if we are taking that ovum cells are there, ova, right? Whatever these cells are there, these are haploid set chromosomes containing cells. Here 3.3 to 10 to the power of 9 base pairs are present. That is about that, okay, human genome that is related to the double standard DNA. Coming to the next one is the RNA. Remember, especially that RNA and then all these typical cases here, single standard DNA, that one is seen in virus. 
and the RNA also seen in virus, either maybe the double stranded RNA, either maybe the single stranded RNA. Both these cases also okay seen in viruses. So double stranded RNA, Rio virus is the best example. Rio virus it contains that double stranded RNA. Tumor virus also best example. Rio virus, tumor virus. These viruses are the best examples which contains the double stranded RNA. And last one is the single stranded RNA. We well known the best example is the tobacco mosaic virus, TMV virus. It contains that single stranded RNA and the HIV virus. So these two are the best examples for the single stranded RNA. Not only these two, the current coronavirus, the coronavirus also having that single stranded RNA. See, uh, students in the first year classes, I said uh, the brainless organisms dominates the brain having organisms. The brainless organisms dominates the brain having organisms. In the evolution process, we feel humans are the most dominated organisms. Human beings are the most dominated organisms. So mostly, that is one of the best theory, whatever that brain having organisms are there, even that classification of organisms, evolution process, right? All these are done by the evolution of brain also, evolution of brain also. But here, nowadays, if we see in the situation, if we see in this pandemic situation, this is the best example, the brainless organisms dominates the brain having organisms. So here, the theme is here, your main point is coronavirus also having the single standard RNA, right? So that is about that the genetic material, whatever the DNA and RNA, mostly the single standard DNA and RNA, maybe the double standard RNA, maybe the single standard RNA, mostly these cases are seen in viruses, mostly these cases are seen in viruses. In double standard DNA, whatever that some viruses are there and bacteria contains double standard DNA, all, most of all living organisms contains the double stranded DNA. That is about that uh, different types of genetic materials. Coming to the next topic, we discussed about that different types of nucleic acids and there is a DNA is there, RNA is there. After that, uh, coming to the next one is within DNA, types of the DNA. See, in DNA also, there are different types of DNAs are there. Because based on number of base pairs per term, based on the rotation, either clockwise direction or anti-clockwise direction, and pitch length means one helix length and helix diameter. See, always DNA is the double helical structure. Always DNA is the double helical structure. So between these two strands, the diameter, that is the helix diameter. See, that is the helix diameter. So here, what I am telling here. There is a types of DNAs are there within the types of DNAs. ADN is there, BDN is there, CDN is there, ZDN is there. There are four types of DNAs are present. ADNA, BDNA, CDNA, ZDNA. See, within ADNA, number of base pairs per turn, 11 base pairs. Within ADNA, the number of base pairs per one turn is 11 base pairs. Rotation is right-handed helix. Right-handed helix means always DNA, okay, the helix, clockwise direction. The helix are formed clockwise direction. The pitch length, one helix length, one helix length is 28 angstroms. So between two strands, the diameter is 23 angstroms. Between the two strands of the DNA, okay, the diameter is the 23 angstroms. That is about the A DNA. And coming to the B DNA, see this is the most existing DNA within prokaryotic cells or eukaryotic cells. The most existing DNA is the B DNA. Within BDNA, there is in 10 base pairs are present. Per one turn, 10 base pairs are present. And rotation here, right handed helix. This one is also clockwise direction. Pitch length is 34 angstroms. One helix length is the 34 angstroms. And helix diameter is the 20 angstroms. Helix diameter is the 20 angstroms. Right? And coming to the yeah, CDNA, within CDNA, 9.33. 9.33 means exactly every 3. Every three terms contains one term. See, first term, second term, third term. This is 9.33, this is 9.33, this is 9.33. Actually, this one is 9, this one is 9, and the third one is 10. Third one is 10. So, what I am telling here, exactly, this is considered as 9.33. 9.33. So, here, CDNA, 9.33, number of base pairs per turn, 
and rotation is right hand helix. Here rotation is the right handed helix and pitch length is here 30 angstroms. The pitch length, sorry, the pitch length is here 30 angstroms. The helix diameter is here 19 angstroms. The helix diameter between two strands, the diameter is the 19 angstroms. Right? Coming to the last one, this is a DNA. This is a very special type of DNA. See, number of base pairs per turn is 12. For, for one helix, the number of base pairs are 12. And here rotation is left-handed helix. All these are right-handed helix, except the ZDNA. Except the ZDNA. ZDNA, left-handed helix. ZDNA forms the left-handed helix. Anti-clockwise direction. All these are clockwise direction. The helix are formed clockwise direction. This one is only forms the anti-clockwise direction. Here pitch length is 24.24 angstroms. Pitch length is 24.24 angstroms. Here internal diameter is the 18.4 angstroms. 18.4 angstroms. So that is about different types of DNAs which are classified based on here number of base pairs per turn and rotation and pitch length and helix diameter. Remember all of you sir, where these are located. Remember most of these are present in eukaryotic cells also. See some viruses contains that ADNA and some viruses contains the BDNA, some viruses contains the cDNA, right? See what I am telling here, in eukaryotic cells also most of these types of DNAs are available or these are present. ZDNA that is also present. During the nucleosome formation, some nucleosomes are formed by the ZDNA. Some nucleosomes are formed by the ZDNA. So the nucleosome also contains the ZDNA. Most of the cells contains DNA is the BDNA. Most of the cells contain DNA is the BDNA. Most existing DNA also BDNA. Most existing DNA also BDNA. So that is about the types of DNAs.